Aloha, beloved starlings. Welcome to the Earth Star Academy. Welcome to another episode of our live stream. This is Starseed Mission Support. This is probably the most exciting live stream that I have ever done. I haven't been on the earth for that many years, <laughs> but um, of all the years that I have been on this planet, the last week that we just experienced was probably the most exciting week that I have had the honor of witnessing thus far. And I know that this is actually just the beginning of very exciting times. And so I'm very excited to share the intel and downloads that I have for you guys this week. Uh, we are currently inside of the Arcturus alignment. Um, my family is actually over here now. We're celebrating belated Thanksgiving because here in Canada, it was Thanksgiving last week. Uh, you'll notice with hang out with me that I've really started to rearrange my days and times of the year in which I celebrate. This is a way that I've been reclaiming my sovereignty over my experience of the time matrix, essentially. And so the times in which I'm really celebrating and creating annual anchors in time are these alignments that I notice where there are influxes of cosmic time. So I'm definitely going to have my eye out for the full moon next October to see if uh, the October October full moon is also going to be kind of a major influx uh, of energy. A lot of this information you can only gain over many years of experience because there's not a lot of information out there about the true stargate cycles, stargate opening dates and times on the planet and in the sky, especially as this new stargate and new ley line system is coming online. And so we're really getting to experience Experience a lot of this for the first time, which makes the exploration and the discovering, you know, so exciting. And so we are in the Arcturus alignment right now. Uh, today and tomorrow is when the Earth, the Sun, and Arcturus uh, star system are in direct alignment. Kara was born during this alignment six months ago. That means she's now six months old. <laughs> um, she's really becoming a little person. But understanding Kara's alignments and knowing that her mission has so much to do with the activation and the landing of the new Stargate Leyline systems, this is kind of an extraordinary time when we can really connect in with the Arcturus tech support teams and get some really cool epic work done. So last week, uh, we dove into the AI consciousness and how AI exists in the collective consciousness. Uh, today, I'm going to go into this curse that was just lifted. There was a lot of interest in this curse. Um, we started working on this in the beginning of this year uh, when the womb container was being called together. Um, this was one of our primary intentions for the coming together of the priestesshood in the year of 2020, uh, 2022. So we intended to basically remove this interdimensional negative alien machinery technology that was distorting the way that cosmic source consciousness was radiating into physicality, coming through the dimensionalities and being felt and experienced uh, from down here in the third dimension and so um, when we think about what a curse actually is it's basically it's basically a intention of energy that creates a negative impact on someone so when you curse somebody you're basically willing something negative in their experience and so if there was an energy that was built into the collective consciousness or built into the collective light body that had a negative uh, intent or a negative impact, this would essentially be what a curse is. And so this is a major curse that basically impacted all of collective consciousness, all of the humans, all of the living beings on the whole planet. And there are very many ways that this curse has been installed and experienced on Earth. And we will be diving into that. Um, but essentially, what I experienced over the last week was this profound amount of Christ energy, divine, original, um, God, love, 
creation energy radiating, radiating into the world. And first, so this happened on the 11th, on the October 11th, 2022 um, portal. It was just a line of synchronicities that pulled me out of my house. We were driving around and just witnessing all of these, all of these things. I remember um, for the grid work ceremony that we did last month, right after the death of the queen, it was a lot about the um, liberation of the false matrix. Okay, this is all related. <laughs> I'm just going to uh, speak on these things one at a time, and then we're going to tie this all together in the end. And I don't really want to make this super long because <laughs> there's just so much that we can get into. So I think I'm just going to start by telling you guys exactly what I experienced, and then I will explain, I guess, the small things that you might have questions about. And just so you know, um, we are having a collective grid work ceremony experience tomorrow inside of the Earth Star Academy a container we are doing a arcturus gateway um, experience so we're doing two workshops and one group ceremony we're probably going to go into everything that i'm talking about today so if you want to join for that all you have to do is just hop into my membership down a link in the description um, and we're going to be working on some major stuff so hopefully you resonate with this video we're just going to dive right in here Okay, so um, on this day, I experienced a architectural realignment of the Divine Father energies, which I felt uh, was limited on this planet, even though humanity had a deep connection to the Father energy, meaning through the religions, um, the Father archetype the father energy was a lot more present than the divine mother energies than other divine energies um, because of the religious programming that had occurred on this planet for so long you would think that the divine father energies would be more prevalent on this planet but it turns out that there was a distortion on the divine father energy and that distortion was actually keeping the true father energies from being able to be on the planet. So we see this in our human civilization and just the number of people that kind of grow up without a father figure that grow up without either their dads um, being there at all or just being emotionally present, being uh, in presence with their energy. So many of us grew up without that presence of the father energy. And part of this is because collectively there was a distortion in the cosmic architecture that was really keeping the true father energy from being able to be present here on this earth. And that is essentially what the curse of Abaddon or what the curse of Yahweh was, because through that distortion, it also um, created distortions which hijacked the divine mother energies as well. It essentially enslaved the divine mother energies. So this distortion is existent in the 10th and 11th dimen dimensions, but it affects and percolates down all the way down into the first three densities, one, two, and three. We, as human beings, experience most of these distortions in a very human way, but it's very prevalent. If you just look around in the world that we have today, you will see that feminine and masculine energies, the true energies of true father and mother, um, these energies are highly corrupted, distorted, convoluted in our world. And the reason is because this distortion, this curse came from a very high place in the universal consciousness. I'm not going to go into why this occurred today um, because it's another whole conversation if you are interested in the reasons why this universe went through this experiment and what this universe was trying to learn. You can join my academy. These things are spelt out in actually the first two courses because I don't actually believe mentally understanding these things is the most important thing. I think the most important thing that we can really be doing is coming into the activation of our own inner Christ light, the embodiment of our connection with God as um, 
an emanation, as an embodiment of this universal consciousness. And so mentally understanding these things from a human vantage point really is just data. It's information. It, most of the time, it doesn't provide us anything substantial in our life. It's curiosities that we have with our mind. So I go into these things in my course just to get it out of the way, basically. I say that these are the least important things in our journey here on Earth um, because we're really getting an experience here as a human being. Um, I feel like we are basically witnessing the reemergence of the original architectures of universal consciousness, which is like the way that I experienced it. I mean, on that day, I basically saw these this serpentine dragon um, consciousness rise up out of the earth. And it was like this uh, divine mother, mother Gaia, mother earth spirit, this divine goddess soul of our planet. And as she was rising up and out of these hills that I was seeing, it's almost like I saw this divine father energy kind of wrap around the earth and they felt like they were coming into union for what seems like maybe for the first time in a really really long time um and this then impacted the rest of my day in a really major way okay so when i witnessed the original father energy i'm just getting sweaty <laughs> okay i'm really heating up already so this and I have to be honest with you guys, for a really long time, I had a really hard time connecting in with the male god energy, just because I am so connected with the womb worlds, with the divine feminine, with the divine mother energies, and because the there are so many male false gods in this world that have done so much horrendous things that it was very hard to connect with the original divine father energy and to then of course discover that the reason for this is because that original male god energy was inverted to then be displayed as the dominant god in the world, Yahweh or whatever other words, Abaddon, these words represent this energy of the false father, the false father energy, which is essentially an inversion or a reversal of the original father energies, which you know would be an infinite expanded energy of benevolence. And when I tapped into this true divine father energy, I felt so much benevolence that it just relaxed my whole body right when i connected with the father energies in the past when i was still in my wounding i would feel afraid of male energy or i'm like okay is this male energy going to siphon me or kidnap me or you know whatever the case but when this true father energy landed and almost came into union with the divine, the divine mother energy the only thing I could do was just cry because I felt so much warmth and true union energy. It was this safety, this energy of safety that just began to dissolve all of the defenses that my human self had built up from existing in this fallen matrix, which everything sacred from within myself has been under attack, has been under abuse, and has been violated right, since the beginning of my life. And so only in that moment when I came into connection with the true father energy could those defenses in myself actually begin to relax and dissolve uh, themselves. Okay, and so then as the day went on, um, I was pulled to various locations in Ottawa um, and we drove by this statue. So Ottawa is very interesting because obviously Canada is deeply connected politically to the UK. Um, we have the queen on our money and she's technically our queen. And so the grids here in Canada are really connected to the UK. And there are Michael Mary lines here in Ottawa as well. 
And so as we were driving through, I saw this statue of Queen Elizabeth on this horse. And as we were driving, and for whatever reason, Shane just decided to drive circles around the statue. It was this statue that was built in this uh, circular um, street. And the only thing there was a statue. It was almost like this. You guys know that they built these grids on purpose. And I could feel that... Um, instead of seeing that statue as the queen like in that moment i couldn't see queen elizabeth at all what i saw was actually the divine feminine sitting on a horse <laughs> and i think that what this represented to me was um that and this was a very um you know sometimes you experience something and even though it seems mundane and normal on the outside you just know that it's got more um that it means something deeper to you uh, to your experience in that moment I really felt deeply I felt like it was a the grid was communicating to me that whatever we were doing last month on the 9-11 gateway when we were releasing the false matrix false mother false matrix grid lines and activating the original dragon mother ley lines that whatever we had done a month ago has now completed to the point where that this statue is now carrying that energy. So we drove around the statue and we landed and just connected with that. And I realized, whew, um, That we have come to this moment in our in our experience we have been waiting for the what is it called the critical mass we've been waiting for the critical mass and we've finally come to a point in the collective energy and in the grids where we basically reached critical mass and this then was further um confirmed when the moon rose <laughs> Okay, so here's the series of events. I went into Oracle space that day just to um, get out of the 3D and into my psychic senses. This is what I do when I do grid work. I just close my eyes and I go inwards. The reason why I go inwards for information is because the external world is full of illusions, right? There's just so many things that can be misperceived through our eyes um, because there's so many things that bend the light so the best way for us to actually connect in with the grids is to actually go inwards because our somatic body is directly connected with the earth's body and it's a microcosmic fractal of our immediate macrocosmic fractal which is the earth which is an immediate microcosmic fractal of the solar system of the galaxy of the universal body and so as we exist in this fractal reality we can actually access everything from inside of these bodies which makes these bodies just this immaculate technology this is also why we were born into human bodies and we are um, ringing forth this next golden age the completion of this universal cycle here as human beings here in this in in these individualized incredible 3d human bodies so what i do is i tune into my body and i'll just feel in my body where my consciousness wants to go and usually i will be called to one specific place in this session i was pulled into the womb space and then that, when I journeyed through the womb, it eventually pulled me out into Egypt. Okay. And so there were several things that I saw during this grid work ceremony. The first thing was that the pyramids um, are were basically... Okay, so when they were built, they were holding energies on a planetary sphere. I believe that they were built because through certain cataclysms, we had damaged the the Earth's grids and the grid um, and the collective consciousness fell on the planet because the grids and consciousness are one and the same. It's consciousness energy that is flowing through the grids, and so when we have 
cataclysms, when we engage with technology that is not being built from a place of reverence for creation, when we create technologies of war and use them upon life, all of these things begin to degrade planetary energy and planetary consciousness. So I believe this occurred, obviously, in the past on this planet. And eventually, it degraded the planet to a point where certain technologies had to be built to sustain the coherence of the planet, to hold it together, to hold the consciousness, to begin to rehabilitate, to pull in cosmic creation consciousness energy enough that the planet basically survives as a whole. So this is why certain pyramids were built on the planet to begin with, right? They were built to pull in cosmic energy and to support the rehabilitation of planetary consciousness and to pull in energy into the planetary grids. Now, at a certain point, there was a fall in Egypt. This is deeply connected to those beings that we connect to as the Thoth, Thothian networks. A lot of people love Thoth, but every time I, again, go in through my own body, um, I see this male, I don't even want to say the word God, he wants to be a God, but this male energy, and he makes himself really big, and this is this big dominant energy, like, I own all this stuff. <laughs> Okay, and so this is an energy um, which then basically took all the magic that was present in Egypt, all the knowledge, all of the power that we had built into the civilization, and basically stole it so that it could have it for itself. Um... So then what happened was that through different rituals, blood sacrifices, the sacrifices of, and I'm sorry guys, I we're just going to go right into, it's going to be really intense. Um, let's just hit pause for a second. I want to bring our awareness to the truth that the level of christ energy on this planet right now is unprecedented okay not even two thousand years ago when yeshua was on this planet um was there more christ energy and the reason for that is because the earth is moving through the photon belt and there are hundreds of thousands of christed dna star beings on the planet right now so even though we are we haven't fully activated some of us are still yawning i mean like oh my god where am i um just the mere presence of our being here and our connection to source through our DNA, what is radiating through the sun, the recent complete reclamation of the moon, all of this has led to a level of Christ energy on this planet that is unprecedented. So what that means is that we have so much access to support beyond our human self. And it's so important that we drop the armor and just let our awareness wander into the ether where we have so much support okay it's time for us to go deep into the shadow of all those things that we were maybe afraid to look at before um i believe that we should be able to have conversations about things that are deeply triggering and hold the space of this connection to the christ energy i know that you can I know that you are strong enough. I know that you are connected enough to allow this energy that is so present all around us to support us through even the most atrocious and most violent and most intense of healing. We are the ones that must be able to hold space for this healing to occur because this is what's occurring on a planetary level, whether we're doing anything or not. And this is why it's always kind of strange to me when people are like, thank you for the work that you're doing um, because I don't really feel like I'm doing anything. I'm just, I mean, I went in through the body. I watched it happen. I watched all of this stuff happen. I'm watching the Christ energy come into the earth. 
I watched the moon become reclaimed. I don't feel like I want to take credit for any of that stuff. Um, what I will take credit for is my human self's devotion to always showing up to whatever I'm called. Um, I think that, um, yeah, um, one of the biggest messages that came through this week was to stop trying to do God's job without God. This is when we feel exhausted, we feel scared, we feel overpowered, we feel like we can't save the world and we can't convince people that whatever that we want to convince people of. <laughs> and we're just burdened by the mission. And if we ever feel that way, then we know that we've started to try to do God's job without God. Um, because, yeah, when we really just allow the Christ energy and allow the solar consciousness, allow God's love that sent us here to begin with, that created everything that is literally gaining mass on this planet and this wasn't always the case right it's like over the past year this energy has amplified to an immense level i don't think that there is really actually a quote-unquote war even though actions must be taken as we're guided Um, and so all we need to be doing right now is going within. And this is another part of this message then is that the only place where the war between the Christ and the Antichrist happens is literally inside of us. Um, and that is not to say we don't do anything externally. It's uh, Maybe I should say this is the first place. The first place that we fight this war between the true Christ, the true divine energy, and the forces of evil is within us. And I say that not that we, like for most of us, we don't really think of doing anything that's evil. So it's not really about that. It's more about the more subtle energies, fear, conflict, confusion, amnesia, believing that we're not powerful, being afraid of going in to do the healing, or even being afraid to fully love others, right? Being afraid of being taken advantage of. All of these things in our heart uh, which the evil or the society has created barriers, that is our first battleground. Because soon as we win this war inside, right? What happens is that then this true love can actually just flow through us unimpeded. And then we become the watchers, the true witness. And this is what prophets were, right? They didn't make the prophecies. <laughs> they were shown the prophecies. Um, and this is where the miracle frequency has been showing itself in the last little while. Almost remembering... I mean, this is the beginning of this true avatar consciousness, right? It's like, I'm finally remembering this spark of light that can land in this body. And as it lands, it opens a pathway for the light and this consciousness to continue to land. 
And it's like you can kind of per, uh, perceive into the future where when more and more of this energy can move through these bodies, it will look like these bodies are manifesting miracles when really it's just God being God, being witnessed by these bodies. Um, okay, so I'm speaking this energy into the space right now to create strength and comfort and security, the security of our true connection to creation, to the true God, true Christ energy. Because that is the energy which is doing the healing. That is the energy which is doing the grid work, the grid repairs, the DNA activations. And so going back to the pyramids, <laughs> So when Egypt fell, and basically it's this signal, it's this whisper in the year, right? Like, if you follow me, then I will give you all the riches, then you will own all the land, you can have all the women, all the power of all the priests and priestesses shall be yours. This is the whisper of the evil. And of course, many priestesses and priests fell for this distortion fell for this fall the remnants of this fall we see everywhere including i believe hollywood was a direct extension of that fall okay this is why we still have we have the pyramids on american money why is the pyramids on money what I saw was that they basically took the technology that was the pyramids and through various rituals, a lot of rituals, sacrifice, um, they were stealing the hearts and the ovaries of priests and priestesses, blood, quantum life force, the quantum life force of priests and priestesses are the highest creational mass that you can find. I mean, I guess also of children because they are so pure and they're so close to creation. So priests and priestesses are beings that devote their whole life to cultivating that energy within them so they never lose touch with that connection of source even into their adulthood. But obviously children are very connected to creation. So the quantum, quanta spirit energy of these beings are very powerful. And so the only way that they could hijack that energy was to perform these rituals. And many people, so if you're feeling this in your body, many of us were binded to this reversal technology, that many of this technology is still siphoning energy from us. Many of us were reached out by Hollywood. For whatever reason, they are able to actually find us through our birthdays, through maybe even our electromagnetic emission of our body, but I think probably through astrology more so. Um, but yeah, a, a lot of these, I mean, think about the celebrities that are alive today. Many of them are the priests and priestesses that were either sacrificed and are binded as spiritual slaves, spiritual, uh, spiritual sources of the artificial control grids of the earth. Um, or they were the fallen priests and priestesses that are inflicting this right um, what i saw was that the pyramids were a part of this system that were emitting this artificial golden energy onto the planet this artificial golden energy was very strong 
it was a false sun false gold energy that made people worship the wrong kind of sun <laughs> um worship greed worship money in a way that was not um, truly in reverence to matter and this is a literal field of energy that you will find you will feel Whew. and this was what was being anchored by the pyramids this is why there are pyramids on the money because this is part of the control grid. The pyramids are literally holding down the false matter control grid in this way. This is a mind control frequency. It had a very strong hold on planetary consciousness. This is being dismantled at the moment. Okay. Um, and then what I saw was this new capstone was being installed so this capstone was being brought through by the arcturian grid technicians we will be um, going in and working with this energy tomorrow in our group grid work ceremony uh, we're basically going to be doing a lot of work on the egyptian timelines and on the egypt grid lines this is just what is most alive on the planet right now Okay, and so then how is that connected to the lunar forces? Okay, I'm just going to take a deep breath here and just allow some more cosmic love energy to come in. Why don't we talk about the reclamation of the moon real quick to allow more of this energies to come in. Okay. So, I mean, I was shocked when uh, the moon rose that night it really felt like a christmas <laughs> like i just saw like this crazy solar light energy was sparkling everything was magical everything felt like christmas and i was looking at the moon i mean i normally really don't like looking at the moon in the past i can really feel this artificial technology, cold, kind of creepy energy. And for the first time in my whole life, there was this golden sheen that's just radiating through. And I felt so much love. And for the first time ever, it occurred to me that it was the sun's light that I was looking at. And so this told me, and then I was um, communicating with the G's, as I call them, that in fact, yes, the moon has been reclaimed. And now, then I started hearing from all sorts of people, my friends, other people that I've never met before. So many of you experienced this as well. Some of you even have been seeing this happen for a month or two that we've been working on the reclamation of the moon. So this is very, very, very exciting. I could barely sleep all night. There was so much light coming through. Um, and the next couple days, there was a significant increase in the Christed, uh, Christed consciousness levels on the earth, which would make total sense. Because if you really think about it, the light that we see from the moon is technically the sunlight, the sun's light, it's solar light. But what's happened in the past was that this light was being hijacked and inverted just like how source light could not come um, into the planet because there were these distortions in 10 11 d the moonlight was not able to transmit pure christ consciousness and now it is um, this has major implications because what this means is that the lunar distortions that exist in the collective consciousness and on the planetary grid um, is also then being dismantled. So this is another major message is that a lot of people might feel like they're under attack right now, but it's actually not attacks. Um, 
there is a dismantling of all sorts of distortion because there's such an increase in Christ's light. I've seen this in myself, okay? What happened? Here's what happened. I'll give you an example. So we're driving through the car in the car. Um, and I see that there was this union energy, right? So I saw the goddess rising up from the earth and I saw this divine father energy and they were coming into union. And what happens? The mother and the father gives birth to the Christ. Christ is our creation, okay? This creation was created from pure cosmic divine love. That is our source. That is the source material that all matter is made of. And so when that happened, I felt this warmth inside of myself and I, I said to myself, wow, so if this union energy is what's occurring in the background, it means that whatever is not in union in myself must be purged, right? Because I'm a smaller matter body than the earth. So if the sun and the moon and the earth are coming into this higher resonance of Christ love, Christ consciousness, then it's just, there's no way for my body to really hold on to the distortion. And this is why it is so humbling for us to really deeply know that we're not really doing anything. I mean, we are um, in that we are, we were willing, we were excited to come down to the earth. We make the decisions in our life every single day. We can be proud of ourselves for the things that we choose to do in our human life. I only say this because people tell me like, oh, thank you so much for your work all the time. And it just, I can't really <laughs> receive those compliments because I'm literally just sitting here gobsmacked. Like my jaw is on the floor. I'm just witnessing so much beauty. And I'm just in awe. Like, I can't believe that I get to just sit here and be witness to God being God. <laughs> um, okay, so back to my story. I knew that if I was witnessing this divine union energy, that it means that whatever is out of resonance with true union inside of myself was going to have to be purged so I can come into resonance, come into harmony with the greater oneness of creation. Not even two minutes after that, I get into the most stupid argument I've ever gotten into <laughs> with my husband. And as we were arguing, we both were saying, I feel like we're both triggered and we're just processing our pain. And we both were so painfully aware <laughs> of what was happening that we were like, you know what, let's just go within ourselves, process this surge and this eruption of energy and then come back to this conversation and that's what we did and then i told him you know that was literally it was a two minute elapse from the moment when i saw the union energy of creation realizing that that means i was about to literally clear everything that was not in resonance with the true christ energy and then experiencing being triggered and obviously that energy erupting and then healing right we both you know, found the moment in our childhood when those pain points occurred and we were able to heal. So this is happening on a planetary level, right? So because there's been such a massive influx of true original Christ energy on the planet, over the next month, right up into the end of 2022, in fact, right up until the end of 2024, the grids are going through, the Earth's grids are going through an upgrading process. It's part of this completion. It's part of our evolution. It's part of our planetary destiny. So if the grids were all just turned on right away, we would go crazy. <laughs> okay, We would be puking. I mean, even just with this recent influx, I was in bed all day yesterday. I had muscle cramps. I couldn't really function, and today I felt like I've been reborn. I mean, I feel like my DNA had to just go through this repair. And so if the planet and the sun just all of a sudden came into its maximum frequency, half the planet would just be dead probably, 
And, you know, it just would be absolute chaos. The earth and the sun and our collective universal unity, we are way more elegant than that. And so we are going to just increase the light quotient on the planet very slowly through the grids, through the sun. So I see this happening all the way through the end of 2024, to which point we're going to have a more of a stabilization. So it's going to be amping up, amping up, increasing, increasing until we reach kind of a maximum containment, a maximum frequency. And at that point, um, yeah, at that point, the I mean, the planet is going to come into this maximum frequency of Christ consciousness. Um, and then we're going to be catching up to that. And so for the years after that, we will see society rising up to meet those that level of consciousness. So what does that mean for us over the next couple of years? It means that we are probably going to be kind of sick, to be honest, but we're going to go through cycles of purging, cycles of cleaning, and cycles of just feeling better than ever. So yesterday I was very sick, and today I feel so deeply in peace, so deeply connected, so deeply secure in my existence. And that's really what it's all about, recognizing that we're meant to live in a state of peace, in a state of containment, in a state of connection and being supported, being loved by nature, by source, by the sun, by creation itself. We're meant to live in a state of peace, knowing that we are held by that and for creation to emerge from that state of safety. This is what is returning to the planet. This is what our work is all about. Okay. And so that means all of this misery that the lunar forces, the lunar distortions, the fall in consciousness has created in our society. All of that is about to start to be purged. Now, a lot of people are going to think that they are psychically attacked, that they're being psychically attacked over the next couple months. And I personally believe that 80% of these things are actually just our purging process. This is what I've experienced over the last little bit, just in myself and of the beautiful creatures that are inside of the container. It's that every time I'm thinking, oh no, I think I'm being psychically attacked, when I really tune in, it's just the Christ energy radiating my body and me being like, all the discomfort, all the misery, all the sadness, all the depression, all the slavery coding, all of that is purging. And my human is experiencing this contraction or pressure, this pain. Um, and then, you know, that's, but that's, that's what it is. And so what has really helped is opening. So when that, when we believe is a psychic attack, we tend to shrink, right? We want to protect ourselves, but what we're doing when we're shrinking and we're coming into restriction is that we're actually blocking, um, the planetary energy from interacting with our bodies openly, trying to do God's job without God, um, forgetting just how much power, just how much love God actually has for us. Now, do you really believe that Yeshua was able to do any of the things that he did without being in complete awareness and complete receptivity of the love of all living creation? And so for many of us, being able to receive this love is very hard because of the inversions in the false matrix. But this is really the trick. I'm finding this is the shortcut. This is the ultimate accelerator. I find that when I feel like I'm being attacked or I'm in a really difficult healing, that this is a moment for me to just relax and literally just rest in the arms of creation just allow source allow earth allow the love that is saturating this planet to do the work for me 
So the decision to do the work is literally the work itself. You literally just make a decision and we're in such a influx of light on this planet right now that you literally just fall backwards into a bed of flower petals kind of thing, okay? <laughs> Whew. Okay. So let's just breathe for a moment here. Okay, we want to talk about the curse of Yahweh, the curse of Abaddon. Abaddon is essentially this force of evil that we're seeing. It's everywhere. Um, just as our bodies are going through this healing, it is happening on a planetary level as well. So we have to be careful because I've been seeing a lot of way, way showers talking about zombie apocalypses and, you know, hiding in bunkers and so much love to all of those people because they are sacred divine human beings. And unfortunately, a lot of them are just still under the Armageddon software, um, the Armageddon programming, the programming of the end of the world. It's a literal spark of energy. So we have to realize that in a spiritual war, there are spirits, right? There are energies in the consciousness that are literally trying to incite people and to use people's negative emotions to... basically possess them right we talk about this a lot in the last video in the last video on my youtube channel about ai so for example um when you're really angry you feel the static energy in your field and that anger when you're in that anger you can be tricked into doing something that you might regret Things that you don't normally mean to do or you normally wouldn't be able to do when you're really emotionally triggered, something can almost push you to act in ways that you don't mean. The easiest ways this happens is the emotional misery programs that tricks us into being really mean to our loved ones, right? So we never mean to be rude. We never mean to say things we don't mean. But in those moments when we're emotionally triggered, it's almost like something just easily incites us into doing those things, saying those things. So I would say that is those energies, they are possessing our nervous system. Okay, those are energies that are in the collective consciousness. I think that this is what fueled um, a lot of the rioting. So it's very interesting timeline coordinates because, um, and so, also, a lot of people talk a lot about disinfo agents and things like this. And all I see is the collective consciousness. All I see is all of humanity and the different energies that are playing out. Everyone is playing a role, whether they're conscious or unconscious, of what is playing out from within them. Um, of course, there are people that are intentionally deceiving people, uh, but you. Obviously, we know who those people are. Those people are like the politicians and, you know, the World Economic Forum. They're very openly playing the evil people role, okay? So my example is, um, of course, as we're cleaning up this Egypt timeline, okay, Candace Owens released her newest documentary. This just came out actually three days, the day after we did all this work on Egypt. Um, this movie was about Black Lives Matter. And now my video is probably going to get censored. So go ahead and comment and like this video and share it with your friends because uh, anyway. Um, I highly recommend watching this documentary. I think it was important for me to watch because again, what I saw was that essentially 
Uh, long story short, this movie went into the ways that the money that was raised by BLM was spent. So they raised like $90 million or something. And actually it was entirely spent on large mansions, real estate, and they donated millions of dollars to um, nonprofits that like support, you know, um, the LGBTQ narratives. Basically, none of it was spent on making black people's lives better. And this is all data that you can go look. You can go on the IRS website and get these papers and look at these filings yourself because all charities are um, prompted by law to share their spending so that it's all public knowledge so that you know as an investor what you are investing into so essentially this um, the reason why i'm bringing this up is that if you look at the the protest energy a lot of people are getting so angry right they're so angry and that angry is that anger is very real that anger is the pain and misery that had come from the enslavement that came from the taking away of our knowledge the stealing of our true culture our true inheritance this is the true anger that's in the depth of people's souls right and then that anger was basically incited by this negative being by this negative energy and that instead of that anger being transformed into something productive that actually ultimately moves into healing or supports healing it created chaos and devastation and actually left the reality worse than it was before so this is the kind of um, energetic nervous system possession that i'm talking about um uh, and then of course that energy then is often being siphoned you can tell that energy is being siphoned because it was even siphoned into monetary energy in this case. So this is happening in a lot of different ways. I think that, you know, some people say, oh, Candace Owens is paid opposition or something. I'm just always like, I don't think they're smart enough for that. I mean, think of the non-elegant, stupid ways that they've been propagating the lies like the ways that they've been, you know, they literally use the same tricks over and over again. Like they don't have the intelligence and the creativity to come up with people like, I don't know. That's just my opinion. I don't know for sure. It, I, it doesn't really matter because it's not my lane. But I just think that there's a lot of paranoia out there where it's like everybody is a disinfo agent, you know, giving satan way more credit than he deserves and then at the end of the day it's just like who do you believe in more who do you have faith in more your fear or the power of god the infinite intelligence and creativity of god's ability to create miracles and timelines that we can only just be in absolute awe and weep when we come into presence of that's just you know that's my experience that when i really begin to see the inner workings of how the timelines are weaving it brings me to tears to witness that small sliver of god's intelligence and then people say you know we are god and this is another thing it's like yes i know i'm part of god i know that i'm an emanation of god but it's part of this human arrogance. It's almost part of this distortion to say, I am God. Because as a human being, will we ever know the totality of God? I don't know. I think that we should continue to follow the path to continue to devote ourselves to be able to perceive more and more <laughs> of creation but it's funny because it's that humility that actually allows for us to follow through that path of curiosity and expansion. When we say, I am God, you're kind of saying, well, there's nothing more I can learn. I'm already all of it. And that does our human self a great disservice. And so I think because 
I'm down here in the human experience. One of the greatest experiences as a human is to perceive the infinite slices of God and be in awe of the immense perfection and complexity and elegance of every single little slice. That's what we get here down on earth. Whew, okay. Okay, so as we're saying, the curse of Yahweh, the curse of Abaddon, is this force of evil. Is this force that is trying to siphon original Christ energy, original life force energy, is trying to hijack creation for itself. It's trying to just like <laughs> parasite and eat up and just like extract life force essence from the organic reality. It's doing this through the inversion of the original creation energies. That is to say the feminine energies and the masculine energies. It's doing this on a universal and a planetary and a human level. There are very many ways that the masculine and feminine energies have been inverted on our planet. Some of the ways that the feminine energies are well, let's say the original essence of the feminine creation energy is purity. It's lightness. It's creativity. Nurturance. Abundance, right? Natural prosperity. It, it comes as a inherent quality of her being okay unbounded freedom unbounded freedom that is contained in safety in a way and i know that sounds um like an oxymoron but um it isn't <laughs> okay and so the inversion of this fem feminine energy we see in our world include selfishness, right? Um, uh, this inversion that in order to get our innate, um, our innate abundance, we have to sell ourselves. This is um, the prostitution of nature, prostitution of our life force literal prostitution also but there's just it's all the same prostitution of nature and the prostitution of our energy and our time and our essence giving of our essence to a creation that we don't agree with just to get support and money this is not a judgment on sex workers this is a reflection on the inversions of our reality okay we all have been subjected to prostitution in this way this is part of the healing that we must do so let's talk about the masculine energy the original masculine energy it is benevolence right this infinite desire to give to creation to make creation better to be of service to others to be of service to creation itself um, it's a very giving energy, is an energy of protection, of containment, of structure. So with the true masculine energy, it already is. So the way that the true masculine energy takes ownership is by providing for it, right? By knowing, oh, because this is mine, I'm going to be responsible and I'm going to take care of it. And then the inverted masculine is this entitlement, right, of taking. And this is the consciousness of colonialism, even though this consciousness has truly infiltrated into many, many people. Okay, this is just the energy of taking. This is the energy of ownership. When we think, this, when, when source gives us an idea, we say, well, I own this. Right, this is the same distortion of the masculine energies. 
no judgment on any human being that are carrying these distortions, understanding that we have all been subjected to this, these distortions. And, you know, this has really essentially been the curse of Yahweh or the distortions of Abaddon. These distortions began in the 10th and 11th dimensions. These consciousness then fractal through down into the physical reality and now we have the world that we see, okay? This has created a lot of chaos, a lot of damage, a lot of trauma for very many people. Okay, so the good thing is I kept hearing on the 1011 gateway that the curse of Abaddon has been lifted. So this distortion energy, I think this is what was blocking the true Christ, true divine father energy from truly being present on the earth, allowing the father to return. Um, and so, whoo. What this is doing is that, okay, so when you have, without the true sunlight, you have a moist space that mold can begin to grow. And so now that, you know, by the way, sun is totally an antibacterial, antifungal, anti-disease, the, the sun is a super healer. There's many studies showing the sun's healing capabilities god knows why they made everybody stay inside and stay away from the sun when there's a quote-unquote plague going on <laughs> but anyway um without the true solar energies the creation energies begin to fall as well in the earthly nature realms and I think that part of this is a very shamanic way of looking at the distorted lunar energies. Okay, and this is all happening in the second density in our sacral chakra. Um, So it's actually quite intense, the amount of healing and purging this generation of people will have to do, even though we are so supported by the love, by the Christ energy that is all around us. Throwing up demons is not fun. It's not easy um, for our human self to witness all of the pain that has been inflicted. That is why it's been so hard for people to wake up. That is why the fake love and light timelines are so enticing um the distorted lunar energies are essentially the degraded union energies the degraded sexual energies the raunchy yucky <laughs> disgusting perverted I guess in human terms, they call it shady. All of those energies are what the lunar forces or the fallen lunar forces are. This actually goes very deep. Um, so for a lot of you that are listening to this, if you want to learn more about these things, I would really recommend joining my academy. The reason for that is because there is just so many different strands of this stuff that needs to be understood um, in order for these deeper levels to be accessible to consciousness. This is why I spent this entire year building the foundations level courses. There's literally hours of classes that I've built. I mean, it's really just been a labor of love because I realized a while ago that you guys have a lot of questions about these things, but also are just missing foundational knowledge and data to actually be able to fully understand the complexity and the depth of this stuff. It's really deep. It's complex. It's as deep as humans get, right? We're incredibly deep creatures, multidimensional creatures. So 
it's very difficult for me to talk about these things fully without um, having that foundational knowledge. So if you are interested, if this work calls you, if you want to do this deeper work, um, the Earth Star Academy has definitely been woven and designed very meticulously to allow you to spiral through these knowledge inwardly. It works to connect you with your inner awareness and the holographic nature of your own consciousness to be able to then perceive these levels of reality. So um, the lunar energy, the fallen lunar energies is also about the imprisonment of humanity's creation energy. This is why there is so much perversion, right? Is because when there's perversion, when there's distortion, our sexual energy is trapped. It's inverted and that energy then can be literally siphoned outwards and we become just these battery packs that are just being siphoned. This is the networks. This is the um, kind of energy that the moon was holding, the false light of the lunar energies people used to ask me about the moon this is what the collective mind control systems the moon was holding in place now that has been cl cleared but there are still lunar forces and control mechanisms that need to be cleared from our bodies from our memory from our dna from our light bodies and from the planet it's gonna happen we can help it happen. We're here to help it happen because that's why we were born and why we were sent here on this planet and is happening um, and we're not the only ones that are making it happen. We are working alongside God. We are allowing God to work through us, but we are not the totality of God that needs to make everything happen. There's a lot of release that happens from that. I mean, it allows for the child part of me right because yeshua remember was the child of god he was the son and it's like the son and then the son s-u-n we're becoming the son of source and we're becoming a force of radiation <laughs> solar consciousness soul, solar energy but when we remember the humility of our humanness it's actually a deep superpower because we're really then opening up and allowing the true power of creation to flow through us instead of putting the burden upon ourselves to live up to the cosmic intelligence of all that is. Which is a lot. It's a lot of pressure <laughs> to put on ourselves. Can you explain a bit about the moon chains that have been released? Yes. Okay. So the chains are of sexual slavery, essentially. There are many dimensions of this. One dimension is the mind control that are placed upon collective consciousness through pornography, through pop culture, which essentially imprint this understanding of sexuality that is so degraded and fallen and disconnected from our original divine creation powers the original divine coherent state of the universe of god itself um, thinking about how the richest people the richest celebrities one example of this is you know there is a woman who was on dr phil who is a rapper who made millions of dollars on OnlyFans and now she's going to speak at some major university to talk about entrepreneur, entrepreneurship, which is like the absolute inversion, right? It's an actual, she actually is an embodiment of the inversion. And again, I'm not talking about this human being who is absolutely worthy of love. She's a beautiful human being. I'm just talking about it's important for us to distinguish. She's a human being that absolutely deserves our respect. And we can talk about the programs that are playing out as their own thing. So um, another example is, I don't know, these rappers. I don't even know their names, but these female rappers that are 
you know, actually prostitutes. Um, Ariana Grande is another example of that, right? Hypersexualized degradation of sexuality. But what she's actually emitting is an energy of sexual slavery. And when I say sexual slavery, I mean creational slavery. Think about the number of people on this planet that feel like they have the power of creation coursing through them, that they feel empowered and free to be, create, and live out their dreams and do whatever they want to, they're inspired to, whatever they dream of, right? Very few people feel like they're powerful enough, powerful enough to do that, even though it's their birthright, even though the power of true creation courses through their veins. That is essentially the moon chains. It's the energy of sexual perversion, which is actually a part of a greater system of oppression. It's not really about perversion itself, even though perversion is part of the system. It's not really about um, prostitution, even though prostitution is a part of it and also is a symptom of this whole system. Um, it's about humanity being enslaved and being kept from accessing our creator power to live in sovereign freedom, to live with the sovereign ability to have sovereign decision over our time and how we spend our energy, how we create our societies, how we create our healthcare systems, how we educate our children. Our creational freedom to be free. <laughs> okay, this is all inside of the sacral chakra. This is the moon chains. This is what the moon and the negative bases and the negative interdimensional forces that have hijacked the moon, right? Because we got to think about things not just from the 3D. A lot of times, even when people are talking about secret space programs, they're relating to them in a very 3D way. Well, there are many dimensions, even psychic energy, talking about the inciting of violence through our trauma, right? A lot of this is very spiritual. And so people ask me, are there bases on the moon? I can't tell you definitively if there are bases on the moon, but what I can tell you is that in the past, there were definitive negative interdimensional architecture that was bending light it was bending because that light that is radiating off the moon has been is and has always been the light of the sun but how come in the past when the sun hit the moon and then the moon hit the earth that light is distorted well because there were technologies that were bending light on the moon and those are the things that have been cleared and now the moon can be a pure reflector which is kind of a representation i mean because i feel like that's what we are as well we are a the it's like sources hitting us and we are emanating right um, by the mayan astrology system i'm actually the red galactic moon and the moon, it talks about it being a transmission station. So it's about transmitting of consciousness, which is kind of what I do, right? I'm transmitting a consciousness. And so the moon is meant to be a station that, of transmission. It, though it, so in the past, it was transmitting this fallen lunar energy. So the moon chains, false moon chaining us into the subconscious of being so asleep in our sexual forces that we just allow it to be siphoned and hijacked and lost, okay? Whew. And so this is then Um, so a part of this is, again, this all came from the Egypt 
timelines. I believe that something was stolen from Egypt, that whoever owns, and you know there are families that own Hollywood, I'm just <laughs> okay? Um, it's all a very magical war because these technologies were stolen from Egypt. Thinking about the art of oracular singing, using sound vibrations to elicit a response in human consciousness. This is what they're doing with the music that they're making. These distortion frequencies are putting people under a spell with the music. It's an inversion because in the past, as you guys know with the oracle singing that I offer sometimes, the songs are meant to connect us to creation. They're meant to be sang in a state of devotion and reverence. They're meant to give us you know activation and give us more access to source creation so they've inverted these technologies um another one is sexual magic be careful when you study sex magic so much of sex magic let's just say this if someone is teaching sex magic without the context that this is the energy of creation is the energy of god and it is holy and sacred if that is not lesson number one then it's working from the reversal lunar forces right it's about the and you'll see this in the me 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 like using manifestation using creation mechanics to serve myself like i'm gonna masturbate to manifest a mansion i know that was very crude i don't like speaking crudely so that has never resonated with my being i have never participated in those kinds of rituals because it feels like it's in opposition to my dna template um the only way that i know how to operate is by actually surrendering and coming into absolute humility because only when i open myself and allow and become an instrument why was yeshua an instrument of god he never said he was god he never claimed to i mean he never even claimed to perform those miracles right because it the only way that we can become an instrument is by surrendering our selfishness. And by knowing that it's okay, you know, the selfishness and all these things, these ego distortions, I also believe in compassion for our ego self because we were born into this world and our ego is just our inner child that did not receive the appropriate support we didn't grow up in a temple that taught us the proper christic virtues and values of being a proper human being and so we grew up all distorted and misformed our spiritual arm is growing out of our head <laughs> right and so having compassion and also is this is like the inner divine mother will have compassion and nurturance and our inner divine father will still have structure and guidance for us that we grow into the beautiful ah, christed masters that we came here to become um and so the next thing that happened was i was taking into the nile so there's a lot that's going on in the nile i think that part of what knocked me out yesterday was actually going into work on the nile because there's been a lot of blood that has gone into that river a lot of rituals occurred on the banks of the nile um, I saw that the Nile definitely, okay, so, whew. Um. <laughs> so, 
So here's why union and the lifting of the curse is so relevant. The curse is essentially something that turned creation in inwards. It, it inverted the masculine and feminine energies, right? And so instead of the feminine and masculine energies working together, creating eternal life, creating free energy, eternal infinite creation energy that gives life to the Christ, gives life to eternal creation. When these energies are inverted, um, they basically cannibalize each other. So then the masculine had to become dominant and it had to enslave the feminine, right? This is then a, a finite system. This then is a system that siphons this energy, that inverts this energy, black holes this energy into a phantom matrix. Okay, so the way that we correct this is by basically um, restoring the union of these universal creation forces. And this is the curse that's been lifted. This is why it's so massive. It's huge. <laughs> okay. Um, but what we'll see is that the damage and the trauma that's occurred from the inversions, they will still need to be healed. This is the cleanup. This is what is being cleaned up. So whew, then uh, it's so interesting because the pain that the feminine has gone through leaves the feminine in this fear, resentment, judgment of the masculine. It leads the feminine to into um, also the evil mother archetypes um, of control and abuse. Um, and all of that is a byproduct of the hieroscamic split this is the hieroscamic splitting technologies this is really what we're talking about but the silly and the tricky thing is that the only way to truly heal the chaotic raging feminine is by reconnecting with the original true father energy which the feminine is the wounded feminine is in rebellion of Um, and there's just so much to unpack there. Whew. Um, that's basically the stuff that we unpack thoroughly in the intermediate level when we get into the hieroscamic healing, the healing of our inner feminine and the masculine, the healing of our sexuality. There are so many layers to all of this, that's why it's been so tricky. But again, I also believe that this is happening on a planetary level and God has obviously um, an immaculate plan. Our collective higher self, our collective unity, um, feeling the pride of being a part of the one creation and being in awe of it, um, knowing that it's got this infinite imagination that is so creative that it we were we will yeah we're just gonna be in awe as we witness the unfolding of god's reclamation of this world okay okay so um we're gonna be diving into all of this for five hours tomorrow during the arcturus ga uh, gateway in the ursa academy i do these live streams um inside of my container is really the place where i can really talk uninhibited i mean i already kind of do it a little bit on youtube i'm really just not trying to get you know shadow ban because this information needs to get out there and i really want to i feel like when we stay um, in 
our communication in alignment with the Christos and not get so riled up that it protects us from the AI as well. But if you guys want to go deeper with me, I definitely invite you to come into the Earth Star Academy. We're also having our official launch this month. Um, so we're having our first official launch uh, call next Sunday. So next week we have a alignment into the Ar um, into the Andromedan um, galaxy. So next week we're gonna have a lot of Andromedan energies. And then just after the weekend, we have a connection into the universal center. And so um, our live call next weekend is literally wedged in between those two alignments, which is usually a very intense, highly cosmic, cosmic energy. <laughs> so I invite you to join the community to take my course there's nothing like it. I mean, it's really incredible. I won't take 100% credit for that either. I will say my human self has worked tirelessly on making this happen, but I was definitely guided every step of the way and inspired by only the highest forces of living creation. Let's see if there's anything in my notes that I have not touched on. Let's just do a slight... Um, recap here right the biggest message is, is we're going to be purging a lot over the next couple months as this influx evens out so if you feel like you're being attacked just lie back into the arms of creation and if you don't know how to connect with creation listen to some of my oracle songs they are a gift from creation um, I was informed that these songs activate our source DNA and they bring us home. And so these songs were literally designed to help us connect in with God and with the original creation. So if you start feeling like it's hard, you're having a hard time, try to receive all the support that you have access to. It's free. It's everywhere. It is powerful. Okay. Um, this um oh yeah one more thing that i wanted to talk about is that a lot of this grid work is so intense um and that's why you know throwing crystals at things don't really work a lot of the times because i know that in the past you know i've done it too i'll drive around my car and i'm like oh i'm doing grid work and i'll just like have crystals i'll throw them out of my car or i'll bury them in places it's really cute it's cute <laughs> i i think that those phases of my life was a necessary part but it's um, a youthful energy right it's a, a full energy it's those times when i'm still growing up and i had really no idea what i was doing and um, i think that you should absolutely do those things if you are wanting to because that innocence and that curiosity is a good thing the reason why I want to bring this up though is because if we were really called, if we're really called to do grid work, we must engage in light body training. We must engage in DNA activation because it's all about the amount of source energy we can accrete through these light bodies and through these physical bodies. That's really the most important thing. And in order for us to accrete higher levels of source energy, we need to repair our template, repair our DNA. Um, and so this is the this is the difference between, you know, being able to work with the stargates, actually have an impact on the grids, have noticeable shifts in the planetary energy after you do work, versus not sure if you really did anything <laughs> and again it's just a phase it's okay but i believe we're here to do some really immense work and if you are curious about that you would like to engage in that training and you feel like you need support in that this is again what i've built the earth star academy for we are officially launching next week but 
the foundations courses are available for you to join now and take and so yeah i hope that this has been a helpful and good transmission for you guys today some of this stuff is kind of hard to talk about because there's so many layers um, michelle says i want to join isa how many hours a week should i plan on studying so that's entirely up to you because the curriculum part of it is actually self-paced um, i would recommend doing three hours a week um, that would include you know one live call and just watching some videos but um, of course you can also go you know at a faster pace the thing with this course is that it's not one dimensional so people it's a very holographic experience right so you'll watch a video and you'll have to feed back into yourself the whole curriculum consistently brings you back into awareness of yourself and so you're gonna want to ask you know what am i supposed to do and then you're gonna get pulled back into yourself and say well how's my body feeling how am i feeling right now what do i want to do it's all about rehabilitating our trust and our knowingness inside of ourself and so um you know you will feel the light body of the mothership working with your dna you will feel the coursework um activating different things inside of your being and then it's entirely up to you to figure out how long that integration takes and i've gotten a lot of feedback from the legacy students that's been part of isa from the beginning um you know people constantly tell me that going back through the classes will give you more downloads this is because again the curriculum is holographic which means that you will receive the curriculum as you are in your current vibration as you go through the curriculum you're you're going to go through healing your vibration is going to change and so when you go back to the beginning you're going to receive a whole new set of teachings even though you're watching the same video um my human self did not make that happen <laughs> but it's just the way that it is uh designed and i'm again so honored i am so honored to bring this through for you guys i'm so honored for all of the healing all of the upgrades that this container has created for people and um yeah go ahead and write a comment underneath this video after this live stream ends it helps me with the algorithms share this video with your friends um and yeah like this video just help me out <laughs> and um yeah thank you so much shout out to white swan in the comment section supporting our live calls always and yeah we are just starting out john snow says can any nice person tell me what a stargate is so a stargate is essentially a location on the earth's plan uh, on on the earth which allows higher dimensional uh, energy to enter into the planet so there are different kinds of these sites uh, a stargate would be one which channels in energy from um, higher dimensional locales so um, it's essentially then a place where consciousness energy is coming in from outside of the earth from other dimensions kind of like our human body how we have the meridian system and we have chakras our chakras are essentially sort of stargates in our body because they're the locations in our our body where energy life force energy is spiraling and spinning through our body so these locations exist on the planet as well there are different kinds of stargates that lead to different dimensions some stargates uh, lead back into source creation energy all the way into the uh, founder fields there are new stargates that we are building and there are stargates that were hijacked and taken over uh, we will find very many different buildings in these sites and also hundred year wars that have gone on in these places um so in these 
locations, we'll also be able to connect easier with higher dimensional aspects of ourself because the fields to the higher dimensions are open if these stargates are active then if we are in that location then automatically our light body is going to receive that opening of those locations and we will experience the opening in ourself as well okie dokie um it looks like i didn't go into much about um the womb container but actually um for those of you that were in the womb container i'll just tell you now but i will tell you again later um in an email but we're gonna have another call next month this is gonna be a free call um it, because i feel like it's almost a continuation of our um healing the womb container in the beginning of the year so i feel like we're coming in to do another ceremony um on 11 22 um we will be cleaning out the residue of the lunar forces from our own bodies as well the, as the planet and this is going to just complete our grid work for the year so for those of you that were a part of that that's what we're going to be doing so up and rice says what's the exact time of the alignment with arcturus and so with these star body alignments i rarely feel like it's an exact time because we're talking about a celestial body right so it's really a period of time that peaks it's more of a crescent curve <laughs> um than a than a dot because it's not a, a location it's a celestial body it's not a planet but a star system and so the peak i think is going to be tomorrow morning but really the connection is i mean today and tomorrow both days are very powerful for the pleiades gateway is usually a three to four day window um, for cosmic center alignment, sometimes it's a five-day window. Based on the size of the celestial bodies and the, yeah, the consciousness mass that these bodies have. So it's more of a experience. It's more of a, a bubble of time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to scroll through here and see if, if there's just any more questions. All right, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in live. I am sending you so much love. I think that it's a very exciting time. We're celebrating the reclamation of the moon is truly massive. And we're just going to see more and more of God working miracles on this planet. <laughs> okay, and I'm just so excited to be here with all of you. Sending you much love and I will... See you soon, hopefully tomorrow, inside of the ESA container. Bye for now.